All right, if you just want to introduce yourselves. My name is Bart I played Adam in the story. You're from Somalia, but you grew up in Minneapolis. What age did you come to Minneapolis? I came to Minneapolis when I was 11 years old. It's a good place to live. You liked it? Yeah. But now you're a Hollywood celebrity living in California? What about you? Um, my name is Faisal Khan. I'm from Somalia. And I grew up in Minneapolis. Um, I came there when I was 13. I mean, right now in between cities, like I do have a home in San Diego and a little bit in LA and now I'm in Minneapolis. Wow. So what, tell us a little bit about the film. I saw it yesterday, but tell us a little bit about it. The film is about uh, a Somali kid and he's going through with his life, you know, his young age life. And he end up being a homeless and he has a dog with him which is like not clean in his I mean Muslim idea ideas and, you know, and it's, it's it's a good story you know, to, like, to showcase the to showcase the Muslim and a Muslim kid and a dog that's that's what the whole thing is about and Somali kid and the Somali community and their culture and the ideas and where they stand in such a situation and you know, it's a good fight. I mean, it's a good moment to see. And what drew you, both of you, to the role? I understand he introduced it. Yeah, he told me about it, and I was really interested, and that actually made me want to be part of it. But in the beginning, I mean, I didn't know anything about it. Without him, I don't think I would be. And what drew you to it? What drew me to it is that I was in a community center one day, and I met the director, and we talked about it, and he actually, you know, gave me the script I read it through and I actually liked the script, you know, so much that I ended up you know, contacting him back and he flew me to New York where we explored the ideas and how the character fits me and we exchange the stories and you know stuff and let's you know write the community and stuff and we actually come up with a good script and we had to know about it and I found this guy because they were looking for a guy that you know, actually fits his that, that fits him? <laughs> what, what, uh, tell us a little bit more about what, what exactly fits him. I mean, the, the character that they're looking for is, you know, uh, denim and muscles and stuff. And I mean, his character goes yeah. after you. Yeah, but, you know, he's like... So they wanted to find a bully for you, and you yeah, picked he, him. He was a bully. So that, that's what I'm hearing. I was, I was like, I think the way I look at it, I've been asked, since I was his parent guardian for that yeah. time, I was his parent guardian for yeah. So and basically I have to have... So I always have to keep him, you know, under control and talk to him a lot. So you're kind of like the big brother. Yeah. yeah. So I think since we already had that experience, just having it on camera, but looking at it in a way where he's a person that's disrespectful and like always makes mistakes, and you know, just like that little new little brother that you might have. Now, the first half of the movie is very. I mean, the whole movie is cultural. But I think the first half is very cultural. It, it shows... So, as kind of an outsider, it was kind of a learning experience for me. Is that something that you set in doing, or did you just intend to share a story? Is this something that you see helping bridge any divide in the community? Because I know, like, St. Cloud has a lot of... I don't even want to say a lot of tension, but there's some undertone tensions in St. Cloud... Is this something that you saw as a kind of an educational tool? Because by the end of the movie, it wasn't a Somalian story for me. You know, it was just a story about a man, you know, and a dog. And so it, it, you forget about that halfway through, and it just becomes a good story. I think that's what makes it successful. I mean, I think, like, what we wanted out of the story is to give people from St. Cloud, people from Minneapolis, and actually to give everyone an inside look about the smart community within Minneapolis. This is just a small window that we could just share our ideas 
that there's other layers to it as well. But there's been some type of gap between like between intentions, like you said. It's pretty good. It's better than what it was before, actually. And the more, when you said educational, is basically yeah, I, that was my intention in the movie because uh, nobody knows like much good. I mean, good views or you know, good publicity from the community. You know, all you hear about is the negative stuff in the community. And one of the things that we end up, uh, I actually intend to do is uh, to show and you know, that the community have more positive stuff. And, there might be some difficulty between the two communities, but they can be, you know, an outcome. When they watch this movie, they can, you know, see the culture. But you can see and you can hear, you know, there's two things. Most people hear about this, you know, the, the culture, but they don't see it, you know, they don't see how it is. And now, I'm pretty sure when they watch the movie, they will have a sense of where the characters, they meet every day, their life, where they came from, how the culture is, you know. And, I'm pretty sure, you know, it's educational, you said. It is educational for me. It was actually when I was doing Now, one scene in the, the film, um, you're sitting with some homeless people, and you eat a sandwich, and they say, that's a ham sandwich. And you're, you know, reacting based on your religion. Now, in Hollywood, they can, that could have been a peanut butter jelly sandwich, and it, you weren't kind of violating any, you know, religious beliefs. With the dog, that wasn't a cat dressed up as a dog to avoid any conflict. And in your culture, the the dog was viewed as being dirty. When dirty means when the dog is wet. Okay. It's not, not the, fact the that dog. It's dry. Fact, no. So it's the wet dog. It's yeah. the wet dog okay. in the mouth of the dog that you cannot you know, touch or associate. But you can have a dog. You know? So did that provide? I mean, because there was wet dog scenes then. Yeah. That wasn't fake water or fake wet dog. <laughs> How, as an actor, was that something compared to the sandwich, which you can fake, you can't fake? So, what was that like for an actor, but also following kind of your beliefs? How do you, was that something difficult? Was that something that you, you had to do because it was a story? I mean, how did you find the balance between respecting your religious beliefs? in doing something that was important for your character. I mean, you kind of have, you know, you have to look at it both ways, you know. I mean, one way is that my religious belief was always with me, you know, and I know, you know, I know the Quran, I know, I know what it says about dogs, and when they're not wet, I don't touch them. You know, basically, you don't touch them with dogs. And you have to actually, you know, you can't, didn't you like wearing a glove? Yeah, I was wearing a glove. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. When the, when the dog was wet, I wore gloves. And, uh, and that satisfied your... Yeah. Oh. yeah. I think it's like... It's more of like... There's ways, even if you basically don't have no choice and end up using your hands or whatever, there's ways that you can basically clean yourself. So you can spray and be able to break. And, but it's just not, it's, it's just dislike because of the fact that it's, you know, you're afraid that it's you know, the office and this might harm it, and this might change it, and you don't want that to be accepted, you know? So now, uh, yesterday was the first time you guys had seen it on a big screen. What, I mean, you've done the Captain Phillips stuff, you've done premieres. What was this like seeing it kind of small, intimate group of people? What was that like, your first viewing? Now, are you getting a nationwide release? Is this being? How is the release being handled for this? I don't. I don't think we do it. Okay. What do you hope that people come away with after watching this movie? We hope that they will understand where we came from and you know how how difficult it is. Our we hope they give us a chance you know, and to explore and to, you know, to learn, to educate, to both communities to come educate each other. You can't tell me your stuff, I tell you my stuff, you know, and we get along, you know, at the end of the day, we're all human beings, you know. Now, in, in the film, you filmed where you grew up. Mm -hmm. What was that like, and where did you grow up in relation to where the filming was? It was in the similar neighborhoods? It was actually the same neighborhood. Okay. I grew up in the same 
towers that we actually see on the side. So what was that like coming back, coming back to your community, filming, in your, but now you're a star? It was actually good, you know. Had, like, I know I had to always come back to the community. You know? I was, I'm always there. You know, I, I, didn't never, I never left the community. You know? I never left the community. Well, we have family that live in the community. You know? A lot of people are like, actually... Uh, tight-knit community, oh, yeah. yeah, we know each other, you know, we always come back to each other, we don't have that celebrity stuff, too many we're always going to be there, we have family, friends, family, we have family, friends, 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 brothers, friends. sisters, that yeah. live there, that goes to school there, regardless of where you go, it's home, it's, it's home to us, yeah. now the director wasn't from Minnesota, yeah. so you guys are kind of like, this is our turf, how much input then did you have, and was there anything that you said, no, this isn't how we do it here in Minneapolis, um, what I kind mean, of input did you have? I think Musa was a great guy because he worked within the community center there and he was like more of like a youth mentor in some ways and he was like a part of the project. I think he was volunteering there for like a few months. He was volunteering there for like a few months. Okay. Yeah. I was working with the PPS uh, to do a uh, uh, small college with the youth and stuff before he went at this. He had the project in mind but he was working with the youth and he was working with the Bronco Center which is like the center like uh, in part, like for the community and stuff. So he knows, he knows, you know, and he's a Muslim too, so he can relate to us. So now he's an honorary Minnesotan. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. What um, what can we look forward to seeing you guys in the near future? There's a few projects that might take place in, in the next episode. Yeah. It's like an HBO series that might happen. I'm not sure yet, but um, it's still just a word of mouth news and uh, a couple of online you know, sites that said it. And uh, I don't know, as far as I know, there was a. For me, I'm understanding with a couple of okay, well, you know, good roles that I found maybe, and I'm going through the auditioning process and whatnot. But what happens in the future, you know, only God knows. We're working to the future. Well, I very much enjoyed the movie and I appreciate you guys' time.